that is listening to our song. See you at SoundCloud. <laughs> yep. My only regret is not hitting record sooner. Oh, no. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Renee, joined by my co-host, Miss Christine Steimer. Hello. And Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello. Welcome, ladies. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year. It's Alexa, weird to be recording this not in the same room. I know. Well, soon. And not next week, but the week after, we will be reunited. Miss um, Alexa Ray um, is absent because she is still back home in CT, Connecticut, visiting her family and doesn't have the proper recording equipment there. And we said, don't worry, girl. You hang with the fam. She did not make good on sending us a video of her using the Christmas trap door that leads to nowhere. It's <gasps> very disappointing. Well, so we've got time. We can text her and be like, girl, get us that video. I know. That's maybe true. I, maybe we will. We'll peer pressure her into doing it. Um, <laughs> so um, we this week are um, having our first show of 2018, episode 34 of the What's Good Games podcast. Um, very exciting that we're starting a brand new year. Um, we do have some um, plans in the works. We have a couple ideas for Patreon that we're hopefully going to talk to you guys about soon um, and some ideas for new content, but we're still finalizing those. So we don't have like a big announcement today, but it'll be um, happening hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so. But... Um, we do have some news. It's a pretty light week. So this section might go by pretty quickly, even though I made the joke that I say that every time that we do a podcast, that it's going to be a short show and then it never is. Nope. But that's today it. might be the day. Maybe it might we'll be. We'll see. It might I feel be. like the industry is coming out of hibernation right now, like slowly stretching the frozen limbs exactly. after Everyone's all those like, holidays. Wait, what do I do again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the bomb yeah. cyclone is coming to the to the East Coast, so everyone truly is frozen. Did you guys hear about this? No. About this no. crazy winter storm that's going to be happening? It should be like the people who live on the East Coast and the Northeast in particular should be in the throes of it by the time this show airs on Friday. Um, but essentially, it's it's like a, a, a giant blizzard that's happening. Oh, <laughs> Welcome to winter. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Winter is here. Was it? Was not, it PAX not East? Not here in Los Angeles. No. No, no. Was it PAX East last year that there was that really bad storm on the yes. East Coast? Because yeah, I remember John that. John Drake injured himself at PAX Mania um, at PAX East. And we had planned a trip to go to New York to visit some friends right after PAX. And because of his injury, um, we were really worried about taking the train because he, if you guys, you know, don't follow us on social media, he jumped in excitement at our uh, apprentice, our butler winning her round uh, during the during the competition. And he ended up rupturing his Achilles and which was a crazy injury to get from something so mundane. Let me tell you, explaining that to the doctor, <laughs> when we had to go see the orthopedic surgeon who like r repairs like all kinds of athletes. He was like, so what were you doing? And we're like, uh, <laughs> I jumped in the it's air. It's a long story, doc. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, um, it was really funny, but, um, we couldn't take the train. And so our good friend, Tara Bruno, who supports what's good games, very graciously uh, drove us back with her to New York and dropped us at our hotel, which was very kind of her. But then we were stuck there because we couldn't get a flight back because John needed to have his surgery. We couldn't fly back to California because all of the flights were completely overbooked because everyone was trying to move. And so they were like, well, the earliest we can get you out of Boston is Thursday. Now, this is the Thursday after PAX. They're like, or you can keep your flight out of New York on Wednesday and we we're like well I guess we're driving to New York so that happened anyway that was Yay, a tangent. Snow. long story <laughs> it's a good story it's all good we need to pad this episode somehow I know right <laughs> um before we get to the news Britt tell me what did you do over the holidays anything fun and exciting how's Jason how's Reb what did you get for Christmas ah uh, um I'm trying to think I feel like that was so long ago but that was only like what last week yeah. Oh, okay. Crazy. Um, thankfully, yep. all of my family is local, so it was just a hop, skip, and a jump, like an hour drive one way to visit Jason's parents, and then spend the morning with them on Christmas, and then an hour drive back to spend it with my family. 
um, Reb got lots of presents. I was telling you ladies before we started recording that he likes to open presents. I, I mean, I don't know if this is something all dogs like to do, but he's kind of obsessed with it. Stein was shaking her head. No, no, none of my dogs would open a present. Okay. So he knows what wrapping paper is. He knows, like, there's something in the wrapping paper. So he got to open a ton of presents, but it became problematic because my mom's birthday is just a few days after Christmas. And so Reb saw my mom's present on a coffee table, and he thought, oh, this must be a present for me. There's probably a big fat ball in there. So I hear, like, this ripping and this tearing, like, this weird oh, sound, and, like, my ew. mom stinks go off. And I'm like, okay, what is my dog getting into this time? And I went in the room, and then sure as shit, he had, like, torn apart half of her present. Not, like, the present itself, but the wrapping paper was torn off. It was all slobbery, and I have a really funny picture of it I'll have to post on social media. Um, but thankfully, the present inside was undamaged, but it was almost... Uh, you know, almost a terminated present. Can you imagine the disappointment Reb must have felt when he ripped that open and then it was not a box? It was a box. <laughs> yeah, it was a box. He was probably like, God damn it, close again. What's this? What is this? Yeah. But no, it was really good. That's awesome. It's cute that your dog knows how to open presents. I'm with Steimer. I've cute. never seen this phenomenon before. I think that the dogs at my parents' house are too dumb for that. They're just like, is it food? Immediately, yes or no. <laughs> You got to see your dogs over the holidays, right? I did, yeah. I went home to Seattle for a little bit, um, and so I got to see all the poppers. And for those of you who don't know, my parents have two Huskies, and I have my dog who's a mutt. He's maybe got Husky in him. I don't know what he is. But uh, the two Huskies really like to howl. They really like to howl early in the morning and sometimes just randomly throughout the day. You'll just hear them, we call it going off. <laughs> they're like, oh, the dogs have gone off. Someone's got to go outside and get them. Like, because they're just sitting in the neighborhood going, oh! I saw the like, video that you posted. No one. We're like, what are you, what, what, what are you, why? Stop, what are you, do, why, what are you doing? And so I posted a video on uh, Twitter and Instagram where I, like, because I don't know if they know what my phone is or like if they think, like, I don't know what they think it is, but anytime I go out there with my phone and I record them and they see, they stop immediately. But if I had done exactly what I did on that video without my phone in hand, they would not have listened. And they would have kept howling until I go up and, like, touch them. And I, like, I'm just always, like, poke, and then, like, oh. <laughs> we like, were going stop. off. Oh, Don't oh. mind us. They're just, they're really doofy dogs. Huskies they're very cute, though. but they're. They're so fluffy. <sighs> Oh, They're yeah. really fluffy, and I just like just grab them around the middle and you just hug them. Yeah, very squishy. They're How cute. were your travels, Andrea? Um, they were good. Uh, so John and I went to Chicago, where his family lives, um, for Christmas to see the Drakes, and it was nice. It was very relaxing. We, of course, have a tradition now. Whenever we land in Chicago. We always immediately before going to John's parents' house go to Portillo's, which is a big Chicago native thing. A lot of people that are from Chicago or live in the Chicago area have a big thing about um, Portillo's, which is an Italian kind of fast food deli style restaurant. Uh, it's not really it's fast good. food, but um, their kind of claim to fame is like their Italian beef sandwiches and their hot dogs. And I mean, they're really good. I mean, the first time I had it, I was like, I didn't understand what the hype was about, which is blasphemous <laughs> for me to say almost. <laughs> um, but the more that I go back and eat them, it kind of becomes like this comfort food. But we all have that like one place, you know, in our hometown that it doesn't matter if it's not like the best food on the planet. It's like the best to you for a specific reason, you know. And um, there's this one Chinese place in my hometown in Fargo that my mom and I always used to go to that, um, that kind of feels the same that I think Portillo's is for John, but now Portillo's ships nationwide. So, um, yeah, those, those hot dogs, they ship pretty well. I gotta say they do. Ooh. You know, what is really difficult to make though? Uh, the, the Italian beef is really difficult to make from the frozen packages because you have to fluff the beef, <laughs> which is a, <laughs> what? a weird thing to say. Yeah, so like they have this whole process. This is a family-friendly show, Andrea. Hey, listen, it's on their I'm packaging, okay? Um, essentially, the the it's very thinly sliced roast beef, and it comes in this package frozen, so you have to let it thaw completely. Even if it's a little bit frozen in the middle, like you're going to mess it up. And then you have to very carefully like peel these very thin layers of beef off 
and then you have to kind of like fluff them up as you go and then you dip them in this gravy that you make on the on the pan also never ever look at the nutritional information for oh no 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 <laughs> you that. don't do that when you go to oh my gosh. <laughs> that's enough to make you cry um <laughs> so <laughs> anyway it's um um, it's become a tradition. It was fun. And we um, we stayed at home. We um, gifted John's brother. Um, we gave him a, a PlayStation for Christmas. You know, got to keep it in the family. Um, so that was fun. And we played Jackbox Party Pack with all our cousins and the aunts and stuff that came over. And at first, um, you know, John's mom was like, I don't know what this game is. I've never played a game. But then she got into it right away because the Jackbox games are super easy to pick up. And it made me think that we should play one on our next um, Patreon stream because then people at home can join in on the Internet. Yeah. Ooh. So it could be fun. No, I like that because I thought so <laughs> funny when we were playing on our last Patreon stream and it was that whatever monster dating thing. Oh, my God. I monster thought we were monster. going to be playing Jackbox. What were we actually playing? I forgot. It, that was part of Jackbox. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah, Jackbox Party Pack 4. It was not the one I'm, I was normally, I was used to. No, maybe it's not Jackbox yeah, then. No, I don't know. There's another one of, that I usually do that has Drawful in it. Wait, you, has what in it? It has Drawful? Hmm. Wow. You don't, do you know what Drawful is? No. It's but... similar. It's like um, you use your phone as well, and you have to, it gives you a prompt, and you have to, like, draw something but it's really bad <laughs> because it's on your phone and you only have two colors to use and you can't erase anything that you draw which I ran into as a problem oh drawful times. 2 is part of the jackbox party pack yes mm -hmm. okay so I think I thought that that was in there and we were going to play that but. oh drawful was included in the original jackbox party pack back in 2014 gotcha old so, school yes. old school yeah. Kicking it old school. So, um, mm -hmm. so that was my holiday. Just kind of chilling, hanging out. Um, now that you said switch. that, I like want a chili cheese dog from Portillo's. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I could technically go get one because they have one in Buena Park. Yeah, and Buena Park's not that far. It's only like 30, 45 minutes outside of. I feel so deprived. We'll, we'll let you experience it. We should have gone during PSX because Buena Park is super close to Anaheim. But yes, we, um, we can rectify this eventually. We'll get some Portillo's sent to the house. We'll make it happen, Brent. Don't worry. I'm not fluffing the beef. As long as you do that. <laughs> you can... Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll just yeah. get hot dogs. Who knows? Fluffing. fluffing the beef is a tasking process, okay? <laughs> okay. Takes a while. you got to be very gentle. Easy. You just boil them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for humoring us <laughs> while we were catching up. Hopefully you guys did some nice... Uh, relaxing or family times or um, movie watching or game playing over the holidays as well. And you got some some time off. I know a lot of our friends that work in retail were very busy all through that season. So a big shout out to everybody who had to work while the rest of us were relaxing. You're the true heroes, the unsung heroes of the holiday. Um, but this week we want to talk about some news and the big news of the week, which is kind of sad because I don't think a lot of people actually care about this news. And it's that the Connect is officially dead. Rip uh, IP. Yes, rip. According to Polygon, um, I don't know where that sound came from. <laughs> I don't know either. It's a mystery. It's a ghost. It's our guest. Um, a podcast guest. Let me, I lost my train of thought. But da 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 da. Uh, the connect to polygon the microsoft connect has dead. ended production of the connect adapter the usb accessory that is required to connect the xbox one sensor to an xbox one s xbox one x or a windows device the company confirmed to polygon this week after careful consideration we decided to stop manufacturing the xbox connect xbox connect adapter to focus attention on launching new higher fan requested gaming accessories across xbox one and windows 10 a microsoft spokesperson said in a statement as for any plans to bring back the item in the future the representative declined to discuss microsoft's product roadmap but said the adapter will no longer be available 
This appears to mark the end of support for Kinect on Xbox One. <coughs> the writing was on the wall in 2016 when Microsoft launched the Xbox One S without the, prop- without the proprietary port necessary to hook up the Kinect directly to the console. The voice-enabled camera peripheral can be plugged into a USB port on a PC, Xbox One S, or Xbox One X, but only via the Kinect adapter. It's important to note that voice navigation and Cortana functionality do not require Connect, except for Hey Cortana, Xbox On. All commands will work with a simple headset microphone. A Microsoft rep noted to Polygon that the company added support for USB webcams to the Xbox One last October, enabling those cameras to be used for features such as Mixer, live streaming, and Skype video chat. So that was a really big selling point for the Connect. Uh, when the Xbox One launch was that you could live stream directly from your Xbox One using the Kinect camera, both for video and for audio. And then, of course, using it for Skype calling. I used it for Skype calling um, with the Xbox One, you know, first edition when it came out. And there were a lot of fun games that also utilized Kinect. And it was really kind of a little shocking to me how quickly they pivoted from wanting the connect to be packed in remember like you could not buy an xbox one without connect to yep. saying okay we're gonna sell it separately to having the xbox one s not even have the port i think that's when the writing was really on the wall for connect but crazy to think of how much money they dumped into <laughs> research and development on this piece of hardware that's now gone <laughs> Goodbye. I just feel bad for all those poor little connectimals that are still alive out there <laughs> that will never be played with again. It was weird for me reading this news because I was one of those. My very first blog post was partially about Project Natal at the time. Did you guys call oh, it yeah. Natal or Natal? Some I people called Natal. it Natal. Natal. And it drove me crazy. Okay, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> Like neonatal my- surgery? When I read this news, it like it was kind of like a weird reflective moment because, like I said, the first blog post I ever wrote was about it was partially about Natal, and I was one of those people who took like my morning off of work so I could like pick up a, a Connect when he first came out. And I loved it for Dance Central because I thought it was like a gateway to like virtual and augmented reality. So I was really excited about it. Um, so for shits, I was like, okay, I'm feeling a little reflective. So I looked at the um, uh, Project Natal uh, announcement trailer at e- from E3 2009, and I was like, holy crap, that's good for some shits and giggles if you're feeling like you want some shits and giggles. Like, just was watch that, that one? Did was Milo part of that? I, yeah, I think my I think they released. I watched a couple of videos. The first one I watched was when it showed like the young guy walking into the room and he like gets in a kung fu fight with someone. It was like, oh, Ian, you're back today, and he like assumes the stance. Oh, for the for like the exercise. Yeah, thing, um, yeah, and then it showed, like, the driving demo, and then, you know, where, like, the girl was driving, and then she pulled over in the pit stop, and then dad, like, got jumped up and, like, pretended to, like, fill up her, t- her tank with gas, and then it sh- the Milo demo I watched as well, where she's, like, running her hand along the water, and it was just crazy. Cuckoo Bullshit bananas. Bullshit demo. Alex, Bullshit say. demo. <laughs> <laughs> Cuckoo bananas. Yeah, it was, I remember, um, I, I can't remember if it was connector I think it was so like I remember going to that E3 conference when they made you like walk through a living room like they would they would it was really fucking weird what? so you would go into the thing but you would only go in through is in small groups because you had to walk through a staged living room with a family of actors in it and then crawl through the television space where there should be a television that was like how you entered the area to go sit down before the conference and it was really strange and that was also the year where they suspended um, the family on the couch like, above the audience and I just sat there thinking like how much insurance do you have to have to suspend a family of people there was like a little boy up there <laughs> like, I, like what sort of what, how he was really high up like you that would go through your mind kids can be acrobats I would, that, that's too that's what went through my mind was what the how did you why <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How did you die? Yeah, and then they made us wear like the shoulder pad things on the floor, and then they lit them up at some point. We were like part of the show, and we were like, "What?" Man, that was 
That was my, the last E3 conference I did not go to. Like, that was the first one, what I'm trying to say. I went to the next one in all the years after, so that was, like, the one I missed. So, But gotcha. sounds like it missed quite that a... Shit, crazy bananas. Yeah. Because <laughs> also they had weird um, Cirque du Soleil people on the floor with us that were coming up really close to. Like, the, like And I was like, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, it's just strange because, I mean, if you think, it, like, for me, I, I feel like that was just yesterday, almost. Like, the time has just flown so fast. And so, like, there was this huge deal, like, technology and its advancement and blah, blah, blah. And now it's dead, and it's like, damn. You yeah. Know, it's kind of a somber feeling. But, you know. It is, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not surprising. No, I don't think it's surprising at all. But it is sort of like, oh, like, I I never liked Connect. I'm not going to lie. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't really like any of the games for it. But... You know, it is. It does. I do have memories attached to, like, the conferences and all those things. So it's kind of like, oh, rip and peace, warm fodder. The only game doesn't make any sense. I know that's why I say it. It's like saying pin number, right? True. Yeah. Or ATM machine. Um, Andrea, did you play anything with the Connect? Yeah, I definitely did. Um, Connect Sports, terrible. Um. I did really like um, Zoot Tycoon, but a game that a lot of people forget about that John worked on and a lot of other people did was Dance Central. And Dance oh, that Central was my 2 game. And Dance Central Child 3. of Eden. I learned Soldier Boy Dance that way. Wait, no, not Child of... Yeah, yeah. is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. okay. From then Ubisoft. I got freaked out. I was like, no, not... I was thinking Child of Light, and then they got them mixed up. And, and then there's like, also um, Fantasia, which um, I think had a really amazing concept that would just went over everybody's head. Which is Which sad. One? Fantasia Music Evolved. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there were, you know, several other games that really utilized Connect that I think mm-hmm. just didn't quite hit because um, I think some people had trouble getting it to track. I did like <laughs> using it for fitness. Um, Xbox Fitness, when that came out, um, when Xbox One launched, and you know, you got a free membership to Xbox Fitness for the first however many months or whatever. Mm. I used a lot of that. Obviously not super accurate for reps, especially if you're like doing thing groundwork, if you're doing like push ups and then you're doing jumping jacks and you're like moving around a lot. The camera kind of had trouble keeping track of where you were. But I thought the I thought the promise of what Connect was was really exciting and really cool. And I think the execution just wasn't quite there. Um right. which was unfortunate because I thought it was a really cool piece of technology. But now we'll never know. Now everything's virtual reality. Everyone wants to put a headset on their head instead. Nope. Nobody <laughs> wants that. <laughs> well, I mean, PlayStation announced that over 2 million PSVRs have been sold, so. That's not very many. I I'm mean, <laughs> it's, more than any other, it's more than any other piece of hardware that is in VR. Uh, you. You know, it, it's funny you mentioned Are VR. You? Ever since we were at PSX and we did um, Firewall, the uh, the shooter VR demo. Yeah. I've, I've been itching to get back into VR, and that's kind of like one of my goals for this month is to like get back into it. I miss it. I really do enjoy I'm curious, it. What, what about that experience made you go, I really want to put more things on my head and dance around? <laughs> well, who doesn't? Uh, I think it's just that, like the level of immersion I get from VR, I get a lot of pleasure from it. And I know like some people like you, Sam, or you hate the whole thing about VR. But for me, it's like a new level, and especially it's been a while since I've played VR. So I'm looking forward just- to some of the new horror experiences that are out there, like that's what I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> I, I think the fact, I think you get more use out of it because you are interested in things like horror, which I do think makes a lot of sense with mm. VR, like especially with the audio and everything. Like that makes sense to me. Um, but for the game we played, it was, I think Andrea said this, like why would I not just go play Rainbow Six, which is like a little better. And so it's that, a lot I think better. that's my point with a lot of, um, yeah, a lot better. That's my point with most VR things. It's like, okay, it's not that good in comparison to a game that's not VR. Like, there's usually a counterpart to it somewhere that I can get. Oh, yeah. No, no, for for sure. I mean, even one could argue, like, the horror experiences that are in VR, I mean, the only one I'm thinking that, like, doesn't go with this argument is Resident Evil 7. They're not nearly as good as, like, your full-fledged console, like, non-VR games. But I think it's more of the immersion that, and the ability to look around, whether it's horror or anything, fantasy or anything, to me, I'm like, that turns my crank. So we'll see. <laughs> I'll be curious to see how I, like, feel about it after it's been, like, probably, like, six months to a year. Yeah, I definitely would be interested in trying, trying more. Um, we'll have to figure out a way. Maybe we can... 
do some kind of a let's play or something for it next time you're in town. We do have yeah. an Oculus here just like sitting in the closet. Like the, no joke, just like in the box in the closet. Oh my gosh. I like, no, if we could, yeah. I like rem- reminded myself that it was there when I was like looking for something and I was like, oh yeah, the Oculus is here. <laughs> but Brit, don't you have every every vr set um uh, well we do have the uh the vive but it's um it's at john's office so because they have no like, Brit- really- Brittany has all of them i Brittany, think you have them all yeah right i do yeah and i have a andrew's seen that. i have like a really because my goal was to do like some let's plays with vr i have like green screens like on my back wall i have it behind me um i just have to get back into it it's kind of a hassle and that's one of the things that ch- kind of turns me off about getting started again it's like okay is everything plugged in does the computer like how many updates do i need to do i know you have to do both consoles as well but it's you know just not as simple as turning on a button but it's my goal ladies and gentlemen hold me All to right. it it's her resolution if you will to play more I VR. will um next story is uh one I almost didn't put on here because we talked a lot about this game breaking its own records and its own milestones but um I felt it necessary to mention that player unknowns battlegrounds has passed three million concurrent users on PC on December 30th the hunger games like shooter passed three million concurrent players on Steam that's two million up, uh, up from 2 million at the start of October and 1 million in September. That's crazy growth. I know, isn't it? Like I did the story in April about how they crossed 1 million copies sold. And now here they are with 3 million concurrent players. Player unknown himself, Brendan Green, has said that he thinks the game could reach 100 million total players, not concurrent, to achieve League of Legends-like success. Three, 3 million is more than four times the number of the second most popular game on Steam, Dota 2, which had around 700,000 concurrent users on December 30th. So this is really impressive. I think that PUBG's popularity has continued to grow, unlike League and Dota, because the game is easy to play. Hard to master, easy to play. Anybody right. can jump in as long as you have basic you know, third person camera control experience. You don't really know, have to know how to do much. You don't even really have to know how to shoot very well to have fun in PUBG. You can just kind of run around and hide and use melee weapons if you want to or squat up with people who are good shooters. Or um, you can camp in a bathtub and somehow win. Remember that story? Yes, yes. I do remember that. Or that. Um, and I think it's been really interesting seeing it be popular. It's really unfortunate what's happened with their Xbox One launch because I was really anticipating crazy successful numbers from from the Xbox One launch. But the game is just I mean, it was it's kind of broken and janky on PC, but it's it's at least playable. And obviously lots of people are playing, but I've heard nothing but but gripes from people playing on on xbox one and i i have a a code and i haven't really sunk enough time into it yet but i definitely want to give it a go and see what's 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 happening with PUBG. i mean i've played one match killed two people which is exciting yeah girl um (laughs) but i i finished like 18th or something um that's not bad no it's not bad when we tried playing fortnite battle royale and we sucked (laughs) yeah hey yes you weren't that bad i watched that well, we, uh, well, you need at least a couple of rounds to kind of get your bearings on what, what you're trying to do, yes. where the things are on the map and how the guns work and what the kind of overall strategy is. But it's interesting seeing those two games kind of go head to head against each other. Obviously, Fortnite's Battle Royale free to play versus PUBG's $29.99 to play price point. Um, it'll be interesting to see how... Epic Games and Tencent are going to monetize <laughs> Battle Royale and, how, you know, when they're going to really kind of start making profits because I would imagine that they want to start adding in more ways to buy things in that game because there aren't a lot of things to buy currently, which is I think crazy. Fortnite currently has them beat, like, on monetization strategy already. Yeah, but, I mean, they might they have, have them beat on monetization. They at least have cosmetic game. items, whereas PUBG doesn't even really have... Well, but, anything. but they don't need that because it's thirty dollars to get in, right? Yeah, but they would still, they would make more. Like, oh, true. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying you could make even more money. You're just leaving it on the table for some reason. See, this is what happens with <laughs> microtransactions. Understand. Somebody at the table is like, but we could be making more, guys. It's <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm that person. <laughs> Steimer is the secret person in all of these meetings being like, but guys, what if we charged for this? And I, this, like, I want to Scrooge McDuck it one day, okay? That's my goal in life. <laughs> just don't jump into a pile of gold. You'll die. It will not feel good. Um, <laughs> There's a I, place I, in LA called The Happy Place. And they have a, a pit of gold foam coins that you can oh jump into. God. Why I'm have very we not gone to go. here? I want to go to the happy place. Come oh, with me. me. <laughs> I want to come. Uh, but no, it's funny because a friend of mine got a copy of um, PUBG for Christmas or so, somehow he learned of it. I don't know. But he texted me and he was like, have you heard of this game called public, pu whatever it's called. All I know is PUBG. Player, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Battle I, I always want to say like public unknown battlegrounds, but I know that's not it. Um, and I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, it's really buggy. And I think the word he used was also janky. He's like, but it's so much fun. He's like, I can't stop playing. And I'm like, well, there you go. Doesn't matter. I think um, Jakey is the perfect word for that game. Yeah, yeah. I read a art, an interview with the CEO of PUBG Corp, uh, CH Kim, and this came out yesterday, and he said he'd like to see PUBG to become a universal media franchise based on the game. We want to take part in diverse industries, including esports, movies, drama, cartoons, animation, and more. In fact, we've received a couple of love calls from a number of developers in Hollywood and Netflix. Our dream is to build a new game-based culture through various ways like this and have the lead of that culture. And that's the story published on Destructoid yesterday. Love calls. But, but pub, pub, I know, first off, love calls is an amazing term. <laughs> I know. Anytime either of you call me, I'm going to call it a love call. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. But also, like, what? Like, PUBG is a fun game, but it's by no means an interesting world or <laughs> has any characters because, or... Because they ripped the idea from Battle Royale. Like, I mean, like, they ripped this the idea, idea from, Yeah, from every... Yeah, exactly. It's been it's, done. I mean, look at the Hunger Games. You're not going to do the Hunger Games better than the Hunger Games. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Really weird. I just thought that was of, really interesting. Sort of an arrogant statement. Well, listen, I don't think it's, I don't necessarily think that it's arrogant. I think that it's um, opportunistic and mm. um, optimistic. <laughs> an, op uh, an optimistic opportunist. Um, I clearly, the, you know, like when you get the momentum that PUBG has, every oh, yeah. executive attached to a project like that gets the cha-ching dollar signs in their eyes, right? Like they're like, how can we make this gigantic, right? Like how can we make this Minecraft? You know, it's like I'm essentially like what they're thinking, like how can we make this like a billion dollar brand, right? So that's But it's tricky they're... because Minecraft can be marketed to family friendly audiences, right? So I'm like thinking, how do you make a child friendly cartoon about PUBG? Well, not only that, Minecraft has an interesting or a, a, rather like a unique element to it, which is the art style. Like that is a, vi you can visually look and identify Minecraft things a million miles away. Whereas PUBG is like, it looks like literally every other shooter. Yeah. And, or like just brown, you know, like, or like, you're just like, what, like there's, there's no real style to it. Right. That would, you'd be able to identify in any way, shape or form without the name PUBG slapped on it somewhere. Yeah. We'll have to see. We've been surprised before, ladies and gentlemen. That we have. <laughs> it's, it's true. Um, it continues to just outdo itself. So it'll be interesting to see what other records it will break in 2018. But um, that's going to do it for the news for this week. Like we mentioned, it's pretty slim pickings because everyone's still coming back from break. A lot of people still on vacation like our own A-Ray. Um, but uh, we will have um, some interesting things to talk about from what we played over the last couple of weeks coming up in the next segment. So stick with us, everybody. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Podcast, and it's time for some hands-on gameplay impressions. So what's great about the end of the year is that most of us have some time off, and some of us are trying to escape family. So a good way to do that, video games. Um, yeah. So we get to play things, and I decided to bring um, not only my PS4 home for the holidays, but I also brought my Nintendo Switch which I'm sure a lot of you did. And Steimer, 
you <laughs> just let us know that you were playing your Switch this holiday. You have been playing a Mario plus Rabbids Kingdoms battle. I did. So? And I showed my dad because he likes XCOM. And I was like, Dad, look at this game. It's like XCOM, but cute. <laughs> <laughs> it was That's like, awesome. He was like, uh, cool. Like, sure, honey. All right. Sure, oh. sure, sure. But he wasn't like super into it. I mean, he was like, he feigned some sort of interest. But yeah, I don't, I don't think he really cares. He's much more of a, I mean, he's a military man. So <laughs> he doesn't care quite so much about the cute little rabbit <laughs> and Probably Mario not. bouncing around. Um, but I played a little bit of that. I played almost through the entirety of World 2 now. Um, because I'd put it, I always, like, put it down for a long period of time and then pick it back up. But I, uh, am pleasantly surprised again by how char- I think that game is more charming than Super Mario Odyssey. Just gonna say. Okay. I think that it's got a lot of quirk to it. It's, it's got, it's the interesting. Maybe it. it's just because it's different. I don't know, but I do find it much more refreshing and, like, interesting to play. Well, I feel like the characters in Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, like, have personality. And not to say that, like, characters in the Mario franchise don't, because obviously it's a crossover. But I think that, you know, having them, having the rabbits even have guttural sounds, even though they're speaking gibberish, the fact that they're trying to communicate feels more, like, relatable and more immersive than the constant text on screen that you get in the Mario universe. The idea that very few characters are voiced in Mario or even have sounds that they make at all um, is kind of has always made them feel a little bit like aloof in some ways. And that's what I love about the Rabbids is I feel like they're like they have these little personalities and they're really fun to watch and they're kind of off the wall and zany and they have a very specific you know, style to them. And I think that brought a lot to that franchise and that mashup. 100% agree. And yeah, it's sort of like they're speaking Simlish. And it's like, oh yeah, they're not really saying anything, but you understand. <laughs> you can get exactly. the inflection. Yeah. And all Peach ever says is Mario. Yeah. Did she oh, say it, like no too, or the, like the two words she knows is oh. no to Mario. <laughs> no. Exactly. That's exactly how she sounds. <laughs> I mean, I love her to death. I have like three different peaches on set right now. But um, um, she just needs like a new vocabulary. That's all. Yes. I really, exactly. I really liked Mario Rapids, but it just didn't hold my attention. I think because it was just a pure, it's pure strategy, right? For the most part. Yeah. Um, and when I play a game like that, I'm so reminded of one of my favorite games ever, which is Super Mario RPG. And so it's like I go into Mario Rabbids, it's like, oh, because I agree, Simon, it is really charming. And it's like, oh, it's so cute and so charming. And, and I love all the environments and the little, like, bouncy and, like, whatever nature items, flowers, bushes, whatever the fuck they are. Uh, it's like, I just want this to be like a Mario game, <laughs> like an RPG. But there's no story. And then I'm like, I just can't keep doing it. I kept playing it because it was charming. If it wasn't a Mario and it wasn't a Rabbids game, I, it wouldn't have held my interest as long as did it did. Did you try? I mean, I have actually not tried this mode because I, I don't, I didn't want to touch it. I don't know. I was scared to touch the button. But there's like the, it's got super easy mode or something like as an option down below before you go into a battle. Have you done that? I don't know. I don't know what mode I played on. I'd have to go back and find out. I'm not sure. It's not like, because uh, I don't think there's really a difficulty option. Maybe there is. I don't know. I play it I play it straight and narrow, right? Always on yeah, normal. Yeah, girl. But, um, but there's always a button before every, a, a, a prompt before every battle, and it's like, easy something? And I'm like, what? I, don't, I just think it's just yeah. offering you an easier way to play, maybe. But I've never actually clicked that button, so I don't really know what it does. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was so much the difficulty that turned me off. It was just more like it was so charming and I just wanted like some cute character interaction and like lots of story and I know that's not this game. I get mm -hmm. it, but so I just fizzled a little bit. But I'm happy you're enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Fun times. We're had by all. I'm happy when you enjoy things, Simon. It makes me feel good. <laughs> I enjoy things. <laughs> Who would have thought? When you're um, happy, I'm happy. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, Brittany, <laughs> um, you played quite a few things over the holiday break, and I don't know even where to begin here, so I'm going to let you pick what you would like to talk about. I want okay. us to hear about Episode Ignis because Alexa was freaking out about it so much. 
Yeah, I can keep everything super duper brief. Okay, so I finished Human Fall Flat. I played that cooperatively on Nintendo Switch. It is out on PC, Xbox One, PS4. Uh, if you're looking for a super... You can play it single player, but I would highly recommend you play it co-op. It's the game that I think has made Jason and I laugh the most. The physics, the ragdoll physics are just hilarious. And the puzzles actually get a little intricate. And it's surprisingly difficult in some certain parts, but it's also really, really, really fun. So you should play that. Um, I played episode Ignis, and I did the Assassin's Festival in Final Fantasy XV, and I am all aboard that Final Fantasy XV train again. Choo-choo. Like, I am all about I'm so absorbed in this. I forgot how good this game is. It has its flaws, but it's really good. Um, so yeah, kinda, I don't want to rehash everything that Alexa talked about, but yeah, like everything she said about episode Ignis is completely on track. Um, you make certain decisions in the game, and you see an alternate ending, and I ugly sobbed the first time I played Final Fantasy XV, and I ugly sobbed again when I played this DLC because it's so heart-wrenching, and there really is a beautiful, tragic story within Final Fantasy XV, and I think some of the of Square Enix's downfall is the way that the game, the game was marketed. Um, a lot of people have reached out to us via email, Facebook message, Twitter, but like said, like, hey, like Final Fantasy XV looks... You know, I hear you guys talk about it, but I'm expecting a bunch of angsty, dramatic teenage bullshit. Dude and I'm bros. Like, yeah, dude, dude bros. bros. And it's like, you know, and they, a lot of people have said that's the way that they've seen it. And I don't remember the marketing specifically, but what I've been told from these people is that, like, it's because of the marketing that they haven't pulled the trigger. And it's because of the trailers that were shown that they haven't pulled the trigger, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you're one of those people, I would say, like, there's a very, like, mature, like, you know, it is a JRPG, but it's a very mature, tragic, but beautiful story within Final Fantasy XV. So if that intrigues you at all, play it. Assassin's Festival, um, I learned that, you know, once again, I'm not good at the Assassin's Creed games because I got busted. Every time I would walk by someone, I would breathe. They'd be like, oh, my God, chase hey, her. Hey, you. Would... We recognize you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'd be jumping in garbage bins and in haystacks, and they would still find me, and it was just a hot mess. But I played it, and it was really cute. Again, if you're a fan, I would suggest you do it. Um the quirkiest game I played over the break was Mom Hid My Game on Nintendo Switch. You remember hearing about that one? No. Uh -uh. It, it was it was revealed during, not revealed, it's been out on a different platform, but it was shown off during a Nintendo Direct. Um, I think it was when I was way on my wedding or something. I think you ladies talked, you may have talked about it, but it's the one where you Wait, have to... did you watch a Nintendo Direct while you were getting married? <laughs> no, no, no. It was when I came back. Oh. I was catching up. Doing my job. But it's the game where it's like you have a static screen or sometimes two, and there's like a 3DS that's hidden. It looks like a 3DS. I'm not sure technically what it is. And you have to like point and click and try to find like where your mom hid your game. It's $5. So it's an object game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really, really quirky, and the music's funny, and like the mom is constantly like hiding behind somewhere, and you can't let her catch you. Um, I would recommend that as well. It's $5, and it entertained me for several days. Steimer, don't, don't get hit by your microphone. Oof, I'm calling you was, out. My depth perception is off. <laughs> didn't think it was so close. Um, what else did I play? Okay, I finally got to the Resident Evil 7 DLCs. Uh, so Not a Hero, which is the free DLC, and both of these take place after the Resident Evil 7 story. Not a Hero DLC follows um, the main character you, you meet at the end of Resident Evil 7. If you don't know who I'm talking about yet, I'm extremely surprised by that. Um, you get a little information on Umbrella Corporation and where they're at and why some of the things that happened that they did. End of Zoe follows after Not a Hero. Again, you kind of learn some fates of some very important characters of Resident Evil. Absolutely worth it if you're a fan of the story, I would say. In Resident Evil lore, like you should play this just to kind of learn like what happened to some characters. End of Zoe DLC, you play as a member of the family who punches all of the enemies the entire game. Like you punch that the enemies. Fun. It is. It is weird because, like, t it, the tone of it is silly because, it's like, you're this dude punching, like, these epic, like, creatures called the molded in the mouth, but you're not hurt by it. But, like, the tone of Resident Evil 7 is so serious, but this is so, like, silly. So goofy, yeah. It's so goofy. <laughs> um, okay. And the last thing I'll talk about that I played is Salt and Sanctuary. And I know this game has been out a bit, but I have been playing this game cooperatively with Jason. And it is incredibly fun. I think... I don't know a lot about the studio. I think it's SKA Studios. Andrew, do you know about the studio more than I do? Um, so I got to actually talk to these guys. Okay. It was like two years ago, I think it was. Very small team. Um, the game itself, you know, has been out for a while now. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, like a lot of games, you just lose track of time. You don't get to it. So um, very cool. But um, let me... Um, it's been a while since I spoke to them. Let me just look up really quick. 
I don't know if it's just a husband and wife team, but that's the impression I got. I don't know if it was only two people, but um, anywho, yeah, it's kind of like people describe it as like a Demon Souls platformer 2D game. It's, there's a lot of RPG elements to it. Um, it's very, very fun, very entertaining, not an easy game. Uh, I would highly recommend that game too. Um, <sighs> yeah, it is uh, James Silva and Michelle <sighs> Silva. They are Damn. a team. That's incredible. Um, that James game is calls so himself good. the lead dishwasher. I was about to say, his name sounds really familiar. I know he's done other games before. Yeah. Because didn't so, yeah. they do Dishwasher Vampire Smile? Yeah. Yes. I'm pretty yes, sure yes. they did. Yes, I really yes, yes. Liked, so, Brittany, I really you had quite a, quite a holiday. I did. It felt so good. I was like, oh, video games. I forgot how much I loved you. <laughs> I hadn't been able to play them in a while. Well, that's great. I'm glad that you got yeah. a chance to catch up. I was really looking forward to um, playing a bunch of different types of games over the holiday I was like I'm gonna finish Hellblade I'm going to do <laughs> some more um indies I was like I'm gonna play Night in the Woods I had like a, I had like a whole list of stuff I was but. gonna play and then I played Paragon <laughs> <laughs> girl every week I, I think I'm done playing Paragon I think I'm done I know, playing I have a problem you guys um so I love before, it before I talk about Paragon I did finish Super Mario Odyssey finally um got to the end of that game and then went beyond and collected a bunch of uh, extra moons um I definitely put that game in my top 10 of the year um Definitely not overcoming Horizon Zero Dawn as my game of the year, but it was good. It was really good. I, the thing that I, you know, was hoping that there was going to, I kept waiting for it to get better because so many people have spoken so much high praise about this game. I was like, okay, I'm waiting for this like wow moment to come and it never really happened. And that was disappointing. It was disappointing from the sense that I wanted there to be more... Uh, diverse types of gameplay I wanted the boss fights to be more innovative I wanted the narrative to maybe take an inkling of something different than what Mario has done for the last 25 years um 30 years um you know so that to me was kind of a letdown doesn't mean it wasn't fun it was fun. I thought the level designs were were unique and quirky. I thought the polish was excellent. The music was beautiful. And, you know, it had that cute Mario whimsy and charm that all of Mario games have. You know, and th that's great. But it is really just a collectathon, right? And, like, the whole idea is that you're just running around trying to get as many power moons as possible and had to figure out how to do it. Like, I do like the idea of, like, some of the really difficult levels or puzzles and the sense of accomplishment you feel when you overcome them, like looking and seeing like where a moon is and being like, how do I get there? I need to figure out what I need to do in order to be able to execute this or walking into like a, like a warp pipe and getting into a level and going, Oh my gosh, this is actually going to be pretty challenging. There was a couple that I just like warped right back out. I was like, Nope, Nope, uh, <laughs> Nope. Right out of there. And then I went back and was like, no, I'm going to play this level until I beat it because it's beatable and I'm going to beat it. And, you know, that's a, a, a testament to like a true platformer, right? You know, like you, they make it difficult to help make, give you a sense of accomplishment. And so I think it did a lot of things right, but it didn't do enough things right. And I was really hoping that there would be more innovation. And instead, it really just felt like a greatest hits of Mario um, I feel like that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, because it kind of like grabbed all yeah. of these different elements from various 3D Mario games over the last couple of decades. I like the throwback. Like I like, you know, seeing, you know, Nintendo 64 Mario costume and kind of seeing the castle and the paintings. I was like, that's cool. You know, I like, you know, running into the same kinds of enemies, but mixing in a couple new things here and there. But I don't, I don't feel compelled to go back and play that game to find as many power moons as possible. I think it's definitely going to be a good travel game whenever I'm on an airplane. I'll be like, oh, I'll pick Mario up and grab a couple moons here and there. But I actually feel more compelled to go run around the world of Zelda more, which is a departure for me because I'm a diehard Mario fan. But um, it just, hmm. I don't know. It just felt the too samey. Thing... Whoa. Mm -mm. Is something happening? It's echoing in my ears. 
Let's hope it's just a glitch and it'll go away. <laughs> Technical problems. I wonder if that's because with Mario, it's like you know what your goal is, and I feel like obviously the, the little worlds are so much smaller. It's like I gotta go find power moons, and then what? Maybe like I'm putting myself in your shoes, and I think Zelda would be more appealing because it's you never know what you're gonna find or what you're gonna come across. Do you think that has something to do with it? Um, I think so. Um, I definitely think that Zelda has nailed that exploration element, and the difference between the exploration for me in Zelda and Mario is that I felt like there was a lot of exploration in Zelda that was, didn't give me an immediate reward, but gave me like a long game reward. You know, like you would see an element on the map and you're like, there's something over there. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there's something. I remember the first time I found one of the mazes on the map in Zelda mm -hmm. and I like put a marker there and I was like, that's very clearly a maze. You can tell from, like, the top-down view. I was like, I guess I'm going to have to run over there um, and figure out what it is. And obviously, it was a maze. Spoilers. Mm -hmm. um, and in Mario, the exploration is rewarded in a different sense. Like, you can see different points on the map, and you know that there's probably something over there. But what's over there might just be a couple of coins. And mm -hmm. then that's it. You go over there, you grab the coins, and you turn around, and you go back. And so it's a, it's a, it's a different sense of satisfaction, you know, because sometimes you would go to certain points on the map in Zelda and you wouldn't get anything but a great view <laughs> or maybe yeah. a core oxy, like a single one. Um, but it was part of a more immersive world. Whereas in Mario, I don't know, some of those worlds, I just wasn't, I didn't think they were very inspired. I felt like they were very much ripped from a previous Mario. While others, obviously like New Donk City, was a highlight, you know, it was, it was really neat. It's ironic that the the world that people were super skeptical about ended up, I think, being one of the most exciting worlds in the game, um, hmm. regardless of the the, the weird humanoids <laughs> that, that are in there. But um, it was good. So I had I had a lot of fun playing that. But um, so I got back into Paragon and. But did you really get back into it? Well, kind of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what happened to like you didn't like the way that the new update was working? So you're right. I didn't like it. And I still I still get mad because the balancing is still off. But what I've discovered and the reason why I like that game in the first place is that I got the opportunity to reconnect with some of uh, the people that I played with uh, that I haven't gotten to talk to because I saw that they were playing and I was like, all right, let's do this. And that's really why I play online multiplayer games for the most part is to like have that connection and to talk to people and to have that shared experience. And what I realized was like, I just need to figure it out. I just need to take some time and learn the gen system and learn the cards and learn it all over again and, and try to find the fun in learning it. And when you have people that play with you that encourage you to experiment and to try new things and that aren't just focused on like we must win or we're not having a good time then that makes the experience a lot better and shout out to to Khalif of Spawn on Me podcast for being a great teacher and for being patient and for being a, a supportive teammate to always be like when we're in the lobby drafting and we'll be like okay who's gonna pick what lane who's picking what hero you know, he's always the first to be like, I'll fill, you pick who you want, who are you working on today? And that's really awesome to have on as a teammate. And I feel very fortunate that I get to play games with a gamer like that because I've certainly played with enough people who get really pissed at you if you, you know, if you drop the ball or if you don't get your last hits or if you don't win, you know, and that always sucks. And suck. I, I usually end up not playing with those people very much anymore. Um, but, <laughs> but so I got back into it and I played a couple rounds and I like kind of rediscovered, you know, what I loved about that game. And I'm looking forward to trying some new builds and doing some studying and learning some of the new cards and seeing how it goes. But I did dip my toes into Arena of Valor from Tencent, which was a giant game in Asia, which is a, an online mobile MOBA. Ooh. And um, I'm going to be playing, I'm going to test out some things. Um, their PR team reached out to me and was like, hey, are you interested in checking out more of the game? And I was like, yes. I played give like me a free currency. <laughs> I was like, please <laughs> give me all the unlocks. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them if they can help me out. But I played a couple, uh, a couple matches today with the free heroes that are available. And I'm like, 
this could be bad for me. <laughs> so you're oh. enjoying it then. So, yeah, I had fun. So I had fun in the first couple of matches. My biggest gripe about mobile games, which is a weird gripe to have, is that you need to be online to play. <laughs> I know it sounds weird to say, <laughs> but don't, you don't want to use all your data. I know. I know. Like I have unlimited data, so I'm not worried about oh, okay. that. It, for me, it's like whenever I'm playing games on my phone, it's because I'm usually on a plane or on a bus or, or oh, a train or I'm yeah. traveling somewhere and I don't have access to my console. Um, and so I'm like, oh, I'll play something on my iPad or my phone. But if you have to be connected online to play like Hearthstone, um, then then it kind of like takes the wind out of my sails, which is why the switch is great. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try that out and see how it goes. But um, Steimer, you also have been playing one of my top 10 favorite games of the year from 2017, Assassin's Creed Origins. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like the opposite of Brittany and I like to play one game. Like I don't want to play a bunch of different <laughs> things. It stresses me out to be honest. It stresses like, me I, the fuck out too, girlfriend. Let me tell you. I hate the fact that I like I know that I have like I have Hellblade that I have like I have a whole bunch of things that I had to start to like get a taste of and then drop. Um and I'm like I don't like having that. It just is like like a creepy man standing behind my shoulder and I don't like it. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to dive into Assassin's Creed. I don't know why it's creepy man. It's just a creepy man. Scroll my it. backlog is now a creepy man that stands behind me. <laughs> and it's just judging you. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I got to kind of just like dive into Assassin's Creed the past few days and I've really been enjoying it. Although I will say one thing that's weird for me. So this didn't happen until I was like, uh, I'll say like level 15-ish in the game, so decently far into it. Andrea, I don't know if you've had this issue at all, um, but your thing is happening again. It's pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> but the Xbox will have issues, and the game will like freeze and then catch up and like fix itself. But obviously that's really annoying if it's mid-combat, and you're like, huh. And then ten seconds later, you, it goes oh, through, and it's so it's like hitching, it's like for, like, but like then a, like so it's stuttering. Yeah, it's not. It's straight up freezing. It freezes. And then it catches forth. up, and it's like, like it catches back up. Yeah. Oh. And I'm You're like, what is happening? X, just like a regular Xbox One, or an Xbox One S. It's an Xbox One X. X. Oh, you should definitely should not be having any problems with, with it then. Yeah, I was question. really confused. Is it updated? Is everything updated? I think so. I sh I'll I'll double check and see if they they've patched anything. But um, that's yeah, generally yeah, those updates really are automatic. Strange. So yeah, huh. I don't know. Anyway, that's the weird thing that's been happening to me occasionally now. And again, it only started happening when I got like decently far into the game. So I'm like, is it is the file too big? Like, is it oh, what's going on? Is this okay? Um, please don't crash my game because I like it a lot now, and I just really. <laughs> Oh, I want everything to be okay with it. Yeah, I, no, that's weird. I, I haven't, I didn't ever experience that, that issue at all. And I did find that the checkpointing system in that game is very good. It checkpoints you a lot. So yes, you could like walk God. away from it and you're, I never really had to do more than like a minute or two's worth of gameplay, which is excellent. Although sometimes like it respawns you in a weird spot or like, I'm like, wait, where am I now? Like it takes you a second. You're like. Where'd you put me? Okay. <laughs> now I know where I am. Um, because uh, I sometimes go a little bit too balls out and uh, I die. Uh, You're like, I can do yeah. this. Wait, no, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this. Shit, 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 shit. Horse, where are you? Shit. Yeah, it was, it was funny. She, to I, got, I got the apocalypse horse. Oh, or, good. No, the abyssal the steed. Name? He's the he's abyssal so great. steed. Um, um, horse, I got him. Of the year. So I'm running around on my fire horse, and I'm like, I'm so cool. This game's so cool. <laughs> I really part. like um, the relationship with Bayek and Aya. Bayek. Bayek. The joke. The joke Bayek. that didn't quite land. Um, I think it's great how no one reacts to the abyssal steed. No one says anything about the fact that you just are riding a horse that's on fire. I did um, murder a bunch of people on accident because, well, here's the thing. It actually wasn't me. It was the pathing it of the AI. It wasn't her, because... though. It was an accident, but she didn't do it. No I, no, I literally didn't do it because what I do anytime I get on a mount is I push the follow road and, like, go to the marker. And I, st and I just put the controller down. Like, I do not control 
the horse. Wait, I've got a pro tip for you. Runs over everyone in Alexandria. <laughs> There's a pro tip, though. If you're going to do the follow road, did you know that while you're following the road, you can use Senu? Uh, no. You should try I don't, it. I don't think, I, don't pretty, think I tried. It's it. pretty great. So if you Wait, so you just keep moving and then you fly around it? That, okay, I've just been, like, looking at my phone. <laughs> like, I've just been, like, <laughs> doing something else, like, multitasking while I'm, I'm, like, all right, I'm on the road to the thing. All right, I'll just, like, you go ahead, horse, you got it. You know where you're going. Also, you murdered ten people. So cool. Thanks for that. The game's real mad at me. Yeah, it's Keep pretty, your irresponsible it's pretty cool, horse actually. Owner, it's not, it's not my fault. It's You're on your phone, your horse is, like, fault. running over people. You're, like, uh. I would well, consider it manslaughter because it was negligence. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> part of it wasn't. Part of it was mere curiosity. Part of it was probably second degree murder. Um, I <laughs> would just watch, because once it happened once, I was like, wait, what? Like, really? Did my, okay. And so then I was like, wait, is this guy going to get out? No, he didn't get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> He's... Whoops. He's been trampled. The medje should protect the innocent. <laughs> I found uh, that whenever well. I would try to step away and use follow road, I, I like some kind of animal would always try to kill me, and it would pull. You know, it pulls you back in when you're you know not paying attention. Like the game, like kind of like takes you out of the auto run or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so I would never, I would never be able to actually use the follow road also like the horse would take like the really long way around they really do but i like the fact that i could put the controller down and go get a snack chip or something yeah. i don't know yeah exactly like, all right time to go let's go <laughs> but um i finally saved up so i the whole time i've been playing this game i have been waiting and waiting for this perk that they showed me once at e3 and i was like kitty so i finally last night got the animal taming perk. You were very and, excited about that during our demo. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Super excited. Yeah. And there was one bit that was very disappointing about it. So I tamed a lion. I went, I sleep darted his ass. You were like, you're mine now. Uh, come with me, lion. You are my new friend. But then I fast traveled somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Lion does not come with you when you fast travel. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Mr. Lion. And I was like, oh, shit. But now I am excited. I kind of want to run around and see, like, can I tame a hippo? What can I tame? Can I have a giant hippo, like, following me I around? I don't know. I think you can tame know. anything but the alpha animals, right? I don't, yeah. <coughs> Theoretically. <coughs> so I like the idea of Bayek, like, strolling into town with a fucking hippo. Just <laughs> chilling behind him. Like, hey, man, what's up? All right. What's you up know, with you? I actually Would haven't he run over that people? yet. You might. Um, oh. I left it. I was like, you know, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to unlock this. It's fine. Um, but now that you're talking about it, maybe I should go back and, and do it. Yes. I'm going to have, I'm, I have to go find another lion now, but then <laughs> I'm going to just like take my abyssal steed and my lion friend and we shall roam <laughs> Egypt <laughs> together. <laughs> The Three Stooges. Yes, exactly. We will fuck anybody up that comes our way. It will be great. I'm sure the lion will die. I'll have to get another one. That's okay. Um, <laughs> there is an endless amount of lions in this game. There but, are, uh, I... actually. What? No, you're right. There are. There's uh, a lot. There's a lot of lions. And like my whole thing was that I didn't want to kill. I didn't want to kill any of the lions. I was like, you're so pretty and so cute, kitty. I don't want to I don't want to fight you, but man, those lions really want to kill you, so you're kind of forced into it. Well, there's also the uh, like the bandit bros in the sands that have the white lions Ooh. that will kill you, so you have to kill them. Then you're just like, but I want to tame you. Although I didn't have the the ability then. I kind of wonder if you could tame technically like an enemy. Lion? I don't see lion. why not. I want the white lion because it's pretty. <laughs> Logic. <laughs> cool looking and I want it. So okay. give me. <laughs> oh my god. You'll have to keep us posted. <laughs> that I want. Yeah. Um, and then I texted Andrea last night about some stuff, but I don't it's semi spoilery, but like not really. No, it's not. Know. It's not spoilery because it's pretty much like I mean, pr- I would say relatively early in the game about um, about playing as Aya and 
having the the ship battle element in the game. Yeah. So my text to her was like, "Oh my god, do we play as I N L? Yay, 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 yay!" And then two seconds later, I was like, "No, I'm the fucking ship." <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? No, I don't want to be the ship. I don't want to do ship combat. I really, that was a, yeah, it was disappointing. I really liked that element in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Like, the ship battles were on, like, out on the high seas was really fun. But I don't think it was executed quite the way that I would have liked to see it executed here. Um, mm. I certainly would have liked to see them diversify it a little bit more because it's pretty much like a straight ripoff of the combat. Um, from previous Assassin's Creed games, which is fine, but it definitely feels like a little shoehorned in for the sake of it, them wanting to give her a story arc. She does get to do some cooler things later in the game, which I won't spoil. Um, but yeah, the first couple of ship battles, you're like, eh, eh. this again? I don't want to do it. I like doing the regular things in Assassin's Creed more. Like, just straight up murdering people is pretty fun in that game. So, <laughs> just straight like, up murdering secret murder people. is the best kind of murder. <laughs> um, but I think the thing that I've, I, why I've loved this game so much is, is something that Britt and I had talked about a while before, and that it doesn't police you super hard. Right? Like, you can fuck up, quote unquote, and like, yeah. you, you won't be like, oh man, this entire city wants me dead can't go here yeah. anymore uh or no, you're not just like walking around in the wilderness and people are like hey you <laughs> over there yeah i've somehow and, spotted you from five miles away and i'm gonna come and get you now and i was totally reminded of that frustrating mechanic in the freaking final fantasy 15 assassin's creed festival because that's how it is it's like i feel like i just barely walk by someone and they're like you and then i gotta go hop in a haystack or a garbage bin or something but you're right in origins it's not that intense and it's like i can actually enjoy the game and i can mess up because i'm really bad at stealth i'm really bad at trying to blend in i'm just not good at it it takes away a lot of that pressure, so I'm happy. Everybody's with that. bad at stealth, just so you know. Uh, yeah, I, don't I mean, know I just gotta practice at it. But I did like how Steimer was like, "Oh my gosh, the Falake is coming for me. He's level oh. twenty, and I'm level 12. Um, and um, they they are like super imposing, really scary enemies because they make this crazy noise, this like burr, burr, like horn on screen. It's weird. It's yeah, a weird noise. it is weird. Um, it's very intense because they're like, that was awesome. they're, they're like, they're like the falakes are near. Um, also, I thought it was five fi lakes forever, and then somebody said it in context is in a, in a cutscene, and I was like, oops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say that word, um, so I just won't say it. Yeah, but it is yep. satisfying when you take down your first um, Falake in a in a in a battle. Uh, well, I'm level twenty now, so I can go back and kill that guy who was following me around when I was level twelve. You can. It's more satisfying when you're a little bit higher level, but if you want like a challenge, then go for it. I just. I like, mean, I was attacking I just, like, him at level twelve. <laughs> So. I was I was like level thirty five and I was like, mm, you're level twenty, let's go. <laughs> you know, because so what happened? I didn't you because so I also texted Andrea about this. I was like, what is this bullshit? There's a level twenty guy after me now. I'm level twelve. What? what? Um, because it's tied to a thing um, in the like one of the quests in the game, and so when you are around like level twelve ish, like these things will start to come after you. Um, and she's like, you know, you can just run away from them super easy. And I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> but I, well, like, because they, they were going to the place I wanted to go. Like I had a, I had a thing in mind I wanted to do, but anytime I would try and like clear this fort out, um, this fucking guy would come and I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. Like th it's too hard to do both of these things at once. I can't, I can't handle it. Time to um, get your revenge. Yeah. Yeah. So now I can go back and be like. You, me, now, you're yep. dead. Bye. It's all about With sabotaging the Braziers. Right. You just got to sabotage them so no one can but light the signal. nobody had lit it yet. At least in, in that one specific instance, nobody had lit it yet. I have been in other instances where somebody did, and I was like, oh, great. Now, oh, my God. So there was this one escort mission <laughs> that went really awry. <laughs> um, and so, like, you have to go rescue somebody from this super lockdown fort. I, like, snuck in through a back way, and um, then uh, as I I had, as you mentioned, like, the checkpointing's really good, so I kind of, like, got two-thirds of the way through, fucked up, died. I was like, damn it, but then I had the key still, and I was like, yes, all right, let's just go 
get him out, and so he's supposed to follow you out of this thing, and then somebody lights the fucking fire, and the, how do you say it, Falate? <laughs> Falake. Oh. Falake, whatever the hell it is, it was like, hello, and I was like, ah, horse, horse, come here, and so I just like <laughs> run away, and the guy who I'm supposed to escort, they're like, your ally is down, I'm like, I don't care about him, I gotta go, um, and so I'm just <laughs> running away, but then eventually he broke, oh, and then I, I learned, I, what I did is I learned a hippo <laughs> So that the guards Smart. would be a little bit more distracted by the hippo, and then me and the guy like ran away, and we were okay. But I was just like, <laughs> oh, Jesus!" I like Very how you said he was like, "Hello!" Like, is that really what he did? He came up and no, said, "Hello!" It, but there is the, that sort of music that comes with them, and it's like, "Boom, boom." That's us. <laughs> but you know, it's just similar effect. Yeah, it's appropriately intimidating. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Indeed. Oh, and there's this big red angry like symbol over their heads and you're like, oh, God. Yeah, it's like a face with me. horns on it. And mm-hmm. It looks super evil. But it points them out on the map, which is good. Um, yes. But yeah. yeah, I'm glad you're having a good time. I really like that game. I'm excited to go back and, and, and play more and, and, and do more because there's just like so many quests. And there's like all the races at the Hippodrome, which I haven't really done. Now they have like the endless wave mode, the horde mode in the that. arena, which I don't know if I'm going to do or not, but I haven't t- taken part in any of the events yet because I haven't been high enough level. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. I re- really, really enjoyed that game. I thought it was great, but what level did you finish at? I'm currently at 37. Okay. So not quite done yet. There's still several oh, areas on the, the map. Campaign? What was that? You haven't finished the campaign? I th- I think I have. Well, I feel like there's this one mission I did which felt like a definitive end. And I'm questioning now if I still have one more mission left to go or not. Mm. I need to Like a check. recap. Like there's always that one mission after you do the main thing. Yeah. Something like that. I need to. I should I should have an answer for this. I should know. I should know the answer Have you seen this. credits? No. That's a, good, that's a good point. I have then, not seen oh, credits. Then you are not done, then my young friend. <laughs> okay. I definitely have at least one more mission to go then. This is a good point, Britt. Thanks. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. Um, we will have um, more games to talk about next week. Uh, when Alexa Ray is back, I feel like we've got to do the Life is Strange Episode 3 spoiler cast, but she's not yeah, here this week. Yeah, reminds me. I have to play it. So we will not do that this week, but if you forgot about that, we didn't. You still have time to play, so make sure you get on that. Uh, we're going to try to do it next week, and if not next week, or the week after, but be prepared for next week. But until then, we will have some other cool discussion for you coming up right after the break, so stick with us. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the third segment of the What's the Games podcast, and this week we decided to do a little bit of reader mail. As you may or may not know, you can email us at contact at whatsgoodgames.com if you ever have something that you are interested in us discussing on the podcast. Of course, no guarantees. We will look at your mail and we may get to it. We may not. If you want to be sure to have us discuss something, we have a fantastic WGG producer tier at patreon.com slash what's good games if you are so inclined. But we were uh, perusing through our reader mailbag, and thank you so much to everybody who writes in to us. You could also write to us at facebook.com slash what's good games, on Twitter at what's good underscore games, um, or leave us a YouTube comment, youtube.com slash what's good games. This one comes from Kendall. Kendall says, Hi, what's good games? So lately, Hello. I've, I've been creating goals when it comes to gaming. An example would be playing a Final Fantasy game for the first time, which I am currently trying to do with 15 and 9. Do you guys have any goals or bucket lists of sorts when it comes to gaming? Thank you for being an inspiration to a female gamer like myself. So, this is a really interesting question. And Kendall, thank you so much for for writing in. And I think it fits perfectly with a brand new year. We got people making resolutions, trying to change some things in their life. 
So let's talk about some some gaming goals, some gaming resolutions or bucket list items. Um, I certainly know that there is a lot of stuff that I would like to do and franchises I would like to try. I'm trying to think of something that's a realistic goal. Do either of you have a realistic goal or are all of your goals like pie in the sky goals? I think something, it's not necessarily like a, like a goal goal, but um, something that I want to feel more comfortable doing. Uh, and I, tr I actually did this last year, but it made me feel uncomfortable for a while. And that is um, leaving a game behind if you are not enjoying it. And mm -hmm. so for, I didn't finish South Park fractured but a little hole like and that was the game I was so looking forward to and was so hyped about and just kept playing and kept playing and was like okay like it's not bad but it was just missing something for me and eventually I got to the point where I was like I don't know if I'm having fun playing this I feel like I'm mostly playing this because I feel like I should be having fun playing this so I'm gonna stop and like I haven't missed it I haven't that's, missed it one bit. So I think that's yeah. saying something. Um, and so I want to try and, and be a little bit more okay with that because I'm definitely somebody who when I start something, I want to finish it. Uh, even if I don't like it very much, usually I'll just put it on like baby ass baby mode and blast through it just so I can say that I've completed the thing. But I guess I need to remind myself that it's not always necessary. And if you've played enough of it and you're not having a good time, there's just so many other things that you can do with said time that you should stop. No, it's it's true. Uh, that reminds me, I didn't talk about this in our hands-on section, but I sunk about maybe 10 to 12 hours into a game on the Switch as well called Unepic. And uh, Metroidvania um, 2D, you know, it's really cute, really charming, but after I got 50% done, I was like, uh, it's like I like it, but I'm not having as much fun with it as I was the first 50%, and it feels me feel like you're leaving a task unfinished. And it makes you feel like, I need to finish this. But it's like, no, you don't. It's fine. Um, so I totally agree with that one, Simer. That's a really good one. I think for me, and this sounds kind of weird because, like, you know, I'm a co-host on a video game podcast. One of my goals for 2018 is to set aside more time for video games. And what I mean by that is uh, we get so caught up with, like, email or social media or so many other online things that before I know it, you know, it's like 7 o'clock, like I haven't eaten like hardly anything all day, and I'm like, I should probably eat, and then I just want to veg, and then I'm like, when am I going to put in time for video games? So one of my goals is to wake up earlier, like at least by like 7, which is like really early for me. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm Since I've been self-employed to work from home, I've gotten in the terrible habit of like getting up around like 8 or 8.30 every morning, and it's bad. But I tell myself, I'm like, you know, if I get up by 7, that's a, an extra like hour and a half I could have for a game, and that adds, adds up after a while. So that's one of my goals as well, is to just try to like set the phone down a little more and spend more time doing what I love. This uh, playing all these games this past like holiday break was really like an eye opener for me. It's like, oh, this is really fun, and I forgot how much gaming relaxes me. And we don't when I don't allow myself to do that, I I realize I'm much more like uptight and wound up, and it's really important for my sanity. So that's one of my major goals. The game I want to freaking get to is Horizon Zero Dawn because goddamn. <laughs> You did not put it all over break at all, like not even a little bit, not even a little bit. And this is one of this is like an issue, a known Brit issue. It's like I know I've put maybe like ten to twelve hours of Horizon in. I'm not willing to pick up where I left off because I know I've forgotten some story elements. So I know I have to start over. You don't. I know though. I don't. Have to. You don't. Come on, Brit. <laughs> Why I don't know. you just like um like watch like a YouTube recap or something? Like you could probably watch the beginning cutscenes again. Yeah. I know, I know. It, it's I need to get over it, but that's like another issue. Maybe that's another goal of mine. It's like it's okay to pick up a game where you left off. You don't have to sink in the hours you've already put into it. Well, it yeah. can be, but no, I totally hear you, Britt, because um, that's happened to me with some other games where you've put it down for so long and then you try and get back into it and you're like, I don't remember how to play this. I don't remember how to do anything. And then you don't really want to play it anymore because you don't. Yeah. It's not coming to you as naturally, and yeah. we don't really like things we aren't good at. So if you're just sucking it up on this game, you're word. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not fun, but so. But I do like. I do want you to. I know it's the number one game. Horizon. I promise. Promise. You, you're gonna love it. Trust me. I know. Um, one of my gaming goals, uh, much like Brit, uh, to certainly make more time to play more. We certainly get caught up in like running, 
running the business and not actually doing the business <laughs> um, is um, for me is finishing more games. Uh, there are a lot of games out there from 2017 that I didn't get to that a lot of people talked about as being great because I got I stayed with the games that I like and that I love. And I certainly played like a lot of games in in 2017, of course, but I could play more. I remember being a guest on Total Biscuits podcast earlier this year and hearing him and and Dodger and Jesse talk about games on the co-optional podcast I was just like ma'am these guys really do play like a substantially like larger library of games than I am accustomed to having the time to play but they don't have more hours in their day they just use it differently than I do and I certainly would like to spend time playing more indie games and doing and kind of diversifying the portfolio of games that I play um I told Alexa and I'm sticking to my guns that I would play a Final Fantasy game this year. Um, and so I, I will play Final Fantasy nine. So as, oh. as recommended by her and Brit to play. So that's going to happen. So that's on my gaming goals for uh, 2018 is to finish Final Fantasy nine. How many hours do you think that's going to take me? A lot. Uh, a lot. When you say yeah. a lot, are we talking like 50, 75, less? I would say, yeah, about 50 to 80 hours. Is there a difficulty ramp? Can I put it on easy? We'll go faster. There's no easy. It's a, it's turn-based, so it's as easy as much as you want to grind, if that makes sense. I don't want to like grind, it, though. There's some, no, 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 no. There's some really, really good grinding spots. We can get you to, like, <laughs> girl, I, I, I know these places like the back of my head. I got you. Yeah, that's what she yeah. said. Well, I'm thinking of Brit's Muppet song where she's like, Ain't nothing wrong. Brit little Muppet. Hell yeah. Like weird voice. And all, that just made me think of that. No, no, it's, it's good. It's a good Muppet voice. Uh, Yeah, so you piece, there's some really easy grinding. If you really want to get, like, cheatful, we can break out. I can bring over my old Game Shark. My old action Do you still replay. have it? Oh, fuck yeah, man. I have all that stuff. She's a hoarder. Of course she does. Have, ah, I'm a collector. I have my Game Genie. <laughs> Collecting is just hoarding, but more neat. <sighs> I'm going to punch you through this monitor, girlfriend. <laughs> that's okay. I love you. It's true. No, I'm not denying it. It's true. I've cut back. I'm proud of myself. Um, but this, seriously, that's like, you cutting know, back? What? No, no, no. Late, lately, I've cut back. Let's just hold, hold our titties here. It's, it's okay. I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Okay. I'm holding them. <laughs> Um, but if it gets, if you, if you, if you're not into the turn-based battle, if it gets a little too much, which I personally think is very rewarding, um, we, we can get you up there. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Wait good. a minute. With the new, sorry. With the new, because the new re-releases, I think they included things in the game that you can skip a lot of the random battle. That's right. Is they put in a new, uh, Yeah, what is that Final Fantasy IX, though? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming back to me now. I'm thinking of, like, PlayStation Final Fantasy IX. It's all coming back to me now. Um, moments of gold. <laughs> Do you guys remember Celine Dion? Yes, keep yeah, going. Totally. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to look at these these cool things. Yes, I, I looked at the story as well about the, the PS4 release, but um, I don't have the details on the port. But um, I believe yeah. you. Um, Brett, do you have, or Steimer, do you have any other gaming goals for 2018? Mine's the would... opposite of both of yours. You go on. You go on to your bad self. Because, when, Brittany, when you started, you're like, I know we have a video game podcast, but I thought you were going to do the thing that I'm about to do, which is to say I'm actually going to play less video games <laughs> and do other things. But, like, I think what I need to do is basically just schedule my time better. So, they're like, here mm -hmm. is the dedicated gaming time. But I also feel like I want to read more books. I want to, um, like, solve puzzles in the evening or, like, Relearn how to play my flute from high school. Figure that shit out. So, like, there's other things that I want to make sure that I'm rounding out my life with so that sure. video games are not the only thing that I do. No, that's totally fair. I think that's that's healthy. Um, yeah, there. sorry, going back to Final Fantasy IX, there are certain codes and cheats you can implement where you can do, like, 9,999 damage per attack. Ooh. So you'll be fine. The grinding will not be an issue. Um, I would say another goal of mine, and you ladies will laugh at me, uh, is to probably play and finish a, like a Super Nintendo game that I never got around to. Um, don't know. No. So like, I do you have any on the SNES Classic? 
Yeah, like the there's oh god, what what Final Fantasy game is on the SNES Classic? But like the Final Fantasy games, the my first Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy Seven. I played seven, eight, nine, ten, and onward. But um, I haven't played any of the ones like the older ones on the Super Nintendo. So to me, that's you know what? I, I will do. join you in that, and I will play Earthbound. <gasps> oh yes, please. So I can finally like nerd out with you and gold. I would <laughs> love that. No, that would be really really fun. But yeah. I see that look, Andrea. I see it. It's just like complacency. It's just like, okay. No, <laughs> I don't know. Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with going back and playing classics. I think it's important for video game education, and I myself could benefit from playing uh, more, you know, classics in, you know, the, the library of, like, the best video games of all time. However, there's just so many new amazing games that are being released currently that – it's hard for me to justify making time to go backwards when I don't make time for the things that are currently out now, you know? So um, I definitely want to, you know, invest some time, at least dipping my toes into some genres that I don't really spend a lot of time in um, and really kind of looking at some games or some developers specifically, like studios that make a specific type of game that I don't really play a lot of. Um, and really kind of like taking a look at what those what those games are and and, uh, and, uh, and really just finishing more. I would really like to make a goal for myself to finish at least two games a month for 2018 for a total of 24 games. That doesn't seem like very much when you think about it because my friend Ray Carcillo finished 89 games in 2017. <laughs> um, he is Damn. a reviews editor, so he has – he has to play a lot of games and he has dedicated time to play a lot more games because it's like a very substantial part of his job over at EGM. But I feel like if I can get even like a third of that, then I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. And I hope I can at the end of this year, at this time in 2019, when we're on like what episode 70 of this show or whatever, (laughs) um, or it'll be more than that by then it'll be like episode a hundred almost. I'll yeah. have to work oh it my out. God. Um, that I'll be able to say that I crushed my goal, that I beat, you know, so many more games than that. But I'm gonna I'm willing to commit to that. To commit to finishing two games a month every month for twenty eighteen. Goal. Goal set. That's a no, that's a that's great a goal. goal. It gets it gets tricky when you have these big open world games though, right? Where it's like every mm-hmm. game requires so many hours. But that's a good goal too, because it might force you to play some indies and smaller titles that you might not normally get around to. Exactly. You're like, man, I need a four hour game because I just played something that was eighty hours. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go I to know. the indie catalog. What you got for me? Well, it's like the games as services is really what's throwing me off because so many of these tentpole titles are turning into these live service games that kind of continue to draw you back. Like me still playing Destiny Two and me wanting to get back into Rainbow Six Siege and you know, playing Paragon and going to, you know, take a, take a look at another MOBA and seeing all these games do this. It's, it's tough because you want to keep experiencing the new content and the franchises that you love, but not everything can be a live service game because you can't maintain relationships and, and experiences. And really like you can't continue to progress in live service games. If you don't actively play all the time, the community will leave you behind, you know? Mm-hmm. It's frustrating. Yes. Um, but is there a specific type of game that you haven't played or a franchise that you haven't played that has something new coming out next year that you're looking forward to putting on your kind of like to-do list? I don't know if Far Cry 5 counts because I already know I'm excited for it, but this is like the Far Cry 5 I think I'm going to finally play more than like 10 to 15 hours of. And I'm so really looking forward to that. you never finished a Far Cry? Nope. So maybe that's your goal is to finish far, a Far Cry? There we go. That's a good goal. That'll be a fun, easy goal because I'm already like super excited for a Far Cry 5. I would encourage you ladies to play some horror titles, maybe Resident Evil 7. Just try it. I'm, I'm good. Well, it made a lot of I top 10 lists. I'll play with you. <laughs> I'll play it with you. I'll keep my eyes open during all the scary moments and I'll tell you Bring what's happening. at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. It happens. Simer, is there another type of game or a franchise that you haven't tried that you would be willing to go out on a limb and give a shot? 
I feel like I'm fairly well rounded. Like I have, I'm trying to think of a genre that I haven't tried. And I. What about Monster Hunter? Have you tried that? Is that a genre? Well, no, not a genre. I mean, sorry, it's a like franchise. It's a title, like have you, you know, franchise. Yeah. Um, I think I've only like dipped my toe in the Monster Hunter waters. Um. I mean, I'll play that because it, if it's something co-op, like I'm more than happy to play yeah. with you guys. But uh, the thing that came to my mind, and it's not the genre, I've, I've played these genres before, but I missed the first Nino Kuni, so oh. I'm super excited to like get another shot at playing a new updated shiny version. That's awesome! Yeah, hey, it'll be a fun one. I also did long. not play the first Nino Kuni. Um, I have to admit, wasn't really drawn or interested in playing Nino Kuni too. <laughs> But um, I'm probably going to, you know, take a look at it, try it out, see how it goes. Don't know if I'll finish it, but I'll try it. Give yeah. it a whirl. It's all about trying new things in 2018. You try the things. If you don't like them, you follow my rule, which is to drop it like a hot potato, and then you just keep moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I just like yep. to shoot stuff. It's a, it's a problem. You but, know, I, I yeah, play video games because I'm like, I just want to, like, like escape and feel powerful for a little while and then mm. and then be done. That's fair. I don't always yeah. need like a really deep and engrossing story with lots of strategy. I feel like that's been like my big hang up with a lot of JRPGs is that a lot of the storylines I'm just like I this is there's too much happening and I don't understand and you need like a chart yeah, <laughs> to and figure then, like, out what's the going combat on. is all like there's all these different systems working and you have to like know how this element affects this type of combat and then this person has this many hit points and you have these many health points and you have to like keep track of it all and I know some people love that about JRPGs and that's why that genre is so popular and people are like I love that it has a lot of stuff going on it makes me feel like I'm my brain working while I'm playing but I'm like nah nah dog I want to just kind of zone out <laughs> well, that's a totally fair point because I mean I've I never forget like one of my proudest moments in gaming was when I was like 19 and I had to go to work the next day and I stayed up to like four in the morning partaking in like a three hour long boss battle in enchanted arms on the Xbox 360 because you had to manage all of your hit points and you had to know when to heal and when you could attack and you had to learn the patterns and I personally love that, but just lately, um, maybe that's another goal, is to try to get into more JRPGs. Like, that is, like, my bread and butter. It's just the games are typically so long, I haven't been able to really dedicate, except for Divinity Original Sin 2, but that's not a JRPG. Uh, you know, I would love to get back into JRPGs, like Nino Kuni 2. I want to do um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which came out last year. There's just so many, but it's so daunting. But yeah, yeah and games are just stuff. getting... The thing that just makes me, not nervous, but feel a little queasy is like I know how like everybody's padding their games out everybody wants their games to be longer experiences so that you don't trade it in and I understand I completely understand but for people like us I'm like oh, no. <laughs> like, like, please, please 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 just give me like a good eight hour experience and I'll be fine with that yep exactly well these are some good goals I'm proud of us I think that we'll be able to to stick to these mostly and we'll be able to keep ourselves honest. Um, we can do a check in on these goals uh, in the summer in July and, and be like, how, how are we doing on our, on our goals? If we need to readjust, if we need to make more goals or different goals, we can kind of play that by ear. We have to get uh, Alexa Ray's goals uh, for 2018, but um, thanks for writing in Kendall and for letting us know that w what your goals are. She mentioned that she wants to, um, that she's been eyeing Okami and Resident Evil. Um, mm -hmm. I also have never finished a Resident Evil game, so maybe I will check out Seven. We can all play together. We can pass Yay. the controller. Girl, um, if you play Final Fantasy Nine and Resident Evil in the same year, I might have to marry your ass. Like that just. Mm. You're both married, so that's not <laughs> so, legal. It's fine. Don't, Simon, don't complicate things. It's fine. <laughs> the boys can bro out. They'll have a good time. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> um, but thank you so much for writing in. Let us know if you guys are listening or watching, if you have specific goals, maybe we can be inspired by your goals. You can leave us a comment on this video um, on YouTube or the variety of podcast services that it is available on, on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash what's good games. Um, of course, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, all of the places where you can interact with us. Um, like I mentioned at the top of the show, we are going to be changing a few things um, with Patreon. But before we announce any of that, uh, we would like to hear your feedback. We know that we haven't quite made it to our, obviously, to our year anniversary. I don't think we need to wait until then to, you know, potentially do some revamping on things that you guys have been asking for. We have gotten feedback from you guys in the past, and we are very appreciative of that. But considering, you know, the Patreon shakeup that happened um, last month, we, you know, are still figuring out ways to try to recover some of the people that we lost, unfortunately. Um and we would like to hear what you think. If you are a listener or a viewer of this show and you're not part of our Patreon community um, and there's something that you wish that we offered that would entice you to be part of our, that community, we would love to hear what that is. Um, and maybe we could accomplish that together. If you're like, hey, you know, like I would like to support you guys, but you don't do this one thing that I was I really like in another show that I watch or a, a show that you support – uh, let us know. Email us at contact at whatsgoodgames.com and uh, let's have a dialogue about it. We'd love to hear from you. Um, ladies, any parting thoughts? Love you. Happy 2018. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> In oh, like I don't know, Mom. Yeah, Why did you call on me? <laughs> I had to fill in the awkward silence. So I, I seriously, thank you all. <laughs> Amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic weekend. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.